Marcus Ball, I believe, caught one pass in this game. I, uh, I'm a little rusty in regards to looking at the stats late Saturday night, but I believe he caught one pass, and it always runs through my head when I see him catches one pass per game or one every other week. I think, man, this guy is a big, strong guy. He's a monster, and when he heads up field with the ball, he just knocks people over, and he looks like an NFL tight end. That doesn't mean he's got the skill or the pass-catching ability. I don't remember him dropping too many passes. Yeah, it's just a chemistry deal that hasn't developed between he and JT, but uh, that's some utilization that could be coming, hopefully. And then you mentioned, yeah, if you're having pass protection issues, especially in one spot, the tight end is usually the guy that you point to, and especially when he's a big physical guy like, right. like Marcus Ball, and not just a pass-catching Jimmy Graham kind of tight end but a guy that can legitimately block, that that should have probably been uh, in the game plan a little bit more. I uh, completely agree with that. And I think uh, part of Marcus Ball not getting um, as many receptions as he should, he's definitely being targeted, probably still not as much as he should be. Uh, JT overthrew him a couple times. So uh, especially looking back at the Indiana game, one very close, if not in the end zone, uh, that JT missed by a mile. Um, Marcus Ball is usually it's got a mismatch on him throwing a linebacker. If we saw more of Marcus Ball across the middle, I think that's really tough to defend. And one more note on the offense. Uh, they did have the nice drive coming out of halftime. It was the J.K. Dobbins drive that he finally got the ball you know, three or four times. And then the next drive, I think, stalled. But Mike Weber ripped off a couple nice runs in a row. And I was wondering, it, it seemed like the next drive after that, that they immediately went like pass, 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 punt. And I was wondering where the running game went uh, since they seem to have established that. And of course, they weren't going to come back just running the football, but they had plenty of time and they were only down like a score at that point. But they were committed to to continue to try to find Paris Campbell and KJ Hill and, and guys that just weren't um, separating and again, not in sync. Uh, I think uh, they gave up on the run game a little too soon. I think so too. And we talk about utilizing the run game as, as a part of this strategy and a, as a part of this chess match that is football. It has its place in setting up the pass. And I just think they hadn't quite utilized it long enough to set it up. And if it's working, you ride that horse into the sunset. JK, absolutely. 13 carries for JK Dobbins is unacceptable at this point. He has proven as even in pass protection and as a pass catcher and as this incredible, you watched him break ankles when he was out there against Oklahoma. Uh, there's, it's unacceptable at this point for J.K. Dobbins or the combination of J.K. Dobbins and Mike Weber to be under 20 carries. Unacceptable. 